Hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi. I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of the uh, Qibla controversy. And uh, this series has been extremely exciting because we've been uh, literally myself and Dr. Jay Smith, who happened to be here also with me in studio, continuing on uh, our analysis to unpack the argument from both sides, from Dan Gibson's side concerning the fact that his findings revealed that there are at least four different categories of early mosques in terms of their directional prayer, whereas the other side, represented by Dr. David King, argues that Dan Gibson's findings do not truly represent any problem other than the fact that later Muslims became more efficient in terms of finding the direction of Mecca. Today, we are going to actually begin our analyses of the seven different theories that Dr. King basically proposed to support his argument. Dr. J, is that a true representation of the argument? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. And this is one reason why we're unpacking it. I think it's so important that we do get as many different venues and get this out in as many different areas uh, because not only do Muslims need to know this, King needs to know this, and people who are his students need to know this, that much of what they're being taught by King uh, is is no longer appropriate. It may have been fine for five, ten years ago. You need to keep up with the newest data. And That's always, right. I've always been told, as a, whenever you're working with history, you always don't just go with what is the favorite of, uh, of the day. You need to go and see what the evidence is on the ground. You always go and see what the evidence is on the ground. And you can't get any better evidence than what, Gib uh, than what Gibson has on the ground because he's been on the ground doing finding completely new evidence, which, yes, is confronting King's old suppositions, all based on 9th, 10th, 11th centuries theories, nothing more than theories. They were just trying, they themselves were trying to make sense of all this. So let's go back to these theories. Let's go, and, the, and there are seven of them that King bring up. And the f first theory uh, he calls, uh, the, uh, the theory one is built on the authority of the prophet and his companions. And he's saying it was what the prophet said, it's what the companions did, and that's why these early 7th and 8th century mosque builders were building their mosques. The difficulty is this, and this is what Gibson uh, really says, hold on a minute, I don't recall in any of my readings that there is any uh, reference in any of the prophet or his companions of how to build kiblas or how to get the direction That's right. That's right. I'm not aware of any. Are I you see. any? And all the and he says, listen, I have ten thousand books over here. I've read everything. There's nothing here. So you're just creating this out of thin air, because if there's if there's nothing there in any of the traditions, if there's nothing there, in, I'm sorry, of any of the seventh and eighth century. We're not talking about the tradition ninth, tenth, and eleventh century. We're talking about seventh and eighth. Where are you getting this from, King? Uh, where is this? Where, where does Al Bazdawi? Where is he referring to? Right. If he's getting from al-Bazdawi, we're assuming he's referring to al-Bazdawi, but th there's nothing that begins to appear until 833. We know that. We've said this. This has yeah. always been a problem. Until Ibn Hisham even writes the biography right. of Muhammad, we have nothing earlier than Ibn Hisham. Now, we, we don't even have Ibn Ishaq, 765. We don't even have something that's late 8th century. So 9th century is where this starts becoming to appear. They're just redacting on back on what they think, what they know. The same problem we had with the bi biography of Muhammad, we're getting now with this problem with the Qibla. That's right, because you're relying on a later source that somehow is applied now to what took place earlier. But at the same time, even if I were to take myself, you know, like uh, being the uh, devil's advocate right now, being a former Muslim, an Arab from Saudi Arabia, looking at this argument, and if I want to critique uh, this argument, I'll say, well, the Quran itself never talked about Mecca anyway as the direction of Qibla. So where does he even get that impression from? Chapter 2, verse 149, 150, there is nothing. There is Masjid exactly. al-Haram, Masjid exactly. al-Haram, twice in chapter, in verse 49 and in verse 150, repeat it. Twice. The direction, it, it, the direction, not the plural, one. And one it direction. says an area, Al Masjid al Haram. That's all it's saying. So, where is this Masjid al Haram? Ooh, I want to tell you right now, but I can't. I have to hold on because Well, we've by got the to way, let secrets. me argue this. I mean, from the Bible, for instance, Joshua and earlier Moses were in an area where the Lord says, Take off your sandals, for the ground where you're standing is holy. Is holy. Now, that's a holy uh, ground right there. There you go. Is yeah. that the Masjid al Haram? Yeah. 
hold on to that. And for yeah. those of you who are watching, hold on. We are going to answer that, and we're going to let Gibson answer that because Gibson has found the Masjid al-Haram. But that's not for here. That's for now. We're looking at theory number one. And theory number one, we're pretty much shutting that one down because there's nothing in the 7th and 8th century. There's nothing from the uh, Prophet himself. There's nothing from the companions that tell you how to find a Qibla. It doesn't exist. So shoot down theory number one. Let's go to theory number two. And theory number two starts from the premise that the early Muslim built on the foundation of or in line with pre-Islamic religious architecture, which were cardinally aligned. Cardinally aligned, cardinals are east, south, northwest. Those are the cardinal alignments, north, south, east, west, and then northeast, northwest. So you have eight cardinal alignments, the four uh, major ones and the other four minor ones to the corners the four corners. So those are the cardinals. And so therefore, they were just aligning their mosques to these cardinal alignments. Now, what's fascinating, we're going to get into it yet, but we're going to look at about mm -hmm. five or six mosques that he shows to example every one of these seven things. The problem is you can only find one mosque per per. <laughs> is that the China one? We're going to get to it. I'm not going to yeah. say which one it is yet, because what we're going to find is that in every case, he can only find one, possibly two, and he's still not getting it. Gibson is saying, yeah, that may be a coincidence that one or two are cardinally aligned. Uh, but what about the other 98? What about, in fact, it's over 100. What about the other 100? None of them are. That's right. So the biggest problem with this is the cardinal alignments is, uh, and he would say that these are based on Byzantine uh, uh, models. Do you see a problem with that? Well, I mean, uh, I guess if, I, if I'm hearing you correct and hearing his argument correct and I'm represented appro appropriately, he's saying they use existing buildings or temples? Roman temples, Byzantine churches. And they just use whatever direction they have in there? No, no, and they use the existing ones. What I'm saying, I mean... Which are all based, based on cardinal directions. But remember, we need to have the longest wall facing Mecca. And how do churches, how are they built? Remember what we said at the very beginning? Yeah, they're built almost like Churches a, are built this way. Like a cross. Mosques are built this way. Right. Okay? Churches are built elongation, elong long, longitudinally, or I guess I'm right, elongated this way. That's right. Mosques are built latitudinally, so they're elongated this way. And I'm not also, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Jay, I'm not aware of any churches that were converted into a mosque until later after Islam invaded parts like of... Like Sophia in exactly. Istanbul is probably the most famous That's one. That's right, exactly. And those, they just kept the original building, you're right. But the earliest ones, we're going to shoot that one down, but I'm going to wait till we get to the mosque to show you that no, for in fact, what we're going to find is that they completely destroyed those churches and rebuilt over top of them. And the reason why they even built it there is because that was a, that was the when, in, in, in the Byzantine time. Whenever you had a church, it was the center of the town. So you want to build your mosque at the center of the town. It's where the marketplace was. It would make sense. They would build it right in the same place. So they would take the same place. They would destroy the building and they would use the For bricks. For superiority purposes, they want to destroy it anyway. Yeah. yeah. So that's why they use those, not because they want the direction. In fact, what we're going to find is many of them are not the same direction. Now, if I'm going to use this argument once again, if that was the case, then how come Abdul Malik ibn Marwan did not use any of the existing temples or churches when he built the Dome of the Rock? Good point. And we know the reason for that. Right. And that was because he was competing with those. That's right. In fact, he built it above it, looking down onto That's it. That's right. In made fact, it higher than everyone. And Take and ask, not just the Dome of the Rock, but also the Dome of the Chain next to it. Mm -hmm. The Dome of the Chain, look at that. That is right. a Masjid al-Haram. But I'm sorry, that is a Masjid, not a Haram. That's a, it could have been a Masjid Haram. We but I mean, it, it's known in the Muslim world that there are three Masjid Harams, you know, Mecca, Medina, and Al-Aqsa. Well, Al-Aqsa is on the wall, and it was built in 709. Uh, the Dome of the Rock was built in 691, right. and it is in the center. But take a look and see where the entire citadel, which you cannot destroy and rebuild again, the Alexa, which is sitting on the wall, we're going to get into this later, and also the Dome of the Rock, along with the door of the chain right next to it, all of them are facing one direction, and they're not facing the direction of the Church of the Sepulchre, which is down in the valley. That's right. They're facing towards I mean, Petra. Case in point. They're Basically. facing towards yeah. Petra. Yeah. So what uh, Gibson says, they usually built in completely new directions when they built over top of these churches. They did not build them in the same direction of the church, proving that they had an agenda, proving that they had a different Qibla, proving that that Qibla, in any case, all the way up until the 8th century, were all directly towards Petra. Right. I mean, it's a competition anyway. So that's theory number two. Let's do theory number three. 
Uh, theory number three comes from this premise. They built according to the street plans of pre-Islamic cities. And then he wanted to give the example of Cordoba. And uh, I want to, if you could just put this slide up. Let's look at this slide here. Because here is an example of the what he's talking about. But take a look at that. Look and see the, where the lines are. And look where they, see the black circle there on that photograph? Yeah, maybe we can go to the next slide uh, to, to be able to see it even. Let's further. go to there. We can even get it better there. Yeah. That is where the actual the uh, mosque is, the masjid. And you can see where the streets are. Is it following Not those? at all. No. Not at all. I can't see it's following. There is angle. So there's case after case that Gibson came up with. They said, no, this is not the case. In fact, in fact, anything, it did the opposite. We're going to get to the one in Cordoba later because the one in Cordoba, he is correct on that one. And that's what's fascinating that he uses that one as his only criteria. He uses that one to then suggest and impose on all the other ones that this must be the same for the others. I would make an argument as an engineer. In Cordoba, it is possible that the mosque was built first and then the streets will build after that to line up with it. No, and I will just correct you on this, that, that streets were Roman, so they were built before. Uh, I'm saying, I mean, somebody can come up with an argument like this. Okay, in this case, yeah. the, the streets are built, and I would suggest that they did do that. And that's why King yeah. is right for that one mosque. Yeah. What's fascinating is we're going to get to it. Every other mosque is also facing the same direction. Hmm. So what does that say? That the Cordoba one first? No, it's one of the later ones. It's in Spain. Why would the North Africans follow the Spanish That's inclination? Right. And why would they go with the Roman roads when all in their city, none of those roads are, are in the same direction as they are in Cordoba? Right. So King is only taking one example, and he is uh, uh, enlarging it for all examples. And we have a tendency to do that. We have a theory, we want to come out, and we see, find one thing that fits that theory, and say, ah, so that's, what, that's what's going on for all the others. Gibson is saying, no, 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 you've got to look on the ground. Take a look, and you'll see. That, they, that all the other ones don't follow that, so you can't do that. Remember that argument they used to have with them, uh, trying to find Muhammad's name in the Bible, and they come up with um, right. Song of Solomon 516, Mahmud, the word Mahmud. That's right. And they, it looks like Ahmad. So therefore, this must have been Ahmad. yeah. That this was Ahmad, the glorious one. Right, right. Oh, daughters of Jerusalem. Therefore, that's where Muhammad's name is found. Well, there are 11 times that you can find Muhammad in the Old Testament. If you're going to do that, you have to be consistent. You have to go to all the other 10 times and, and change yeah. the Muhammad to Ahmad, put Muhammad's name in there. And in the Lamentations 11, I think it is, it says, if you're going to take Muhammad and put uh, Ahmad in there, then it says they went into the house and they took out all the glorious things, the beautiful things on their shoulders. So they took Muhammad out on their shoulders. <laughs> can you see how stupid that sounds? So you have to, this is the same thing the king has done. He has taken one example and he's inflating it for all the other examples, saying this is what the answer is for all the others. But, but again, like you, you raise a good point. Why would Muslims all over the Muslim world at that time, or the Islamic empire at that time, use a an example that is found in Spain or Andalusia. Why didn't they? It, it should be the other way around. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, when you look at all these parallel mosques, the majority of them are in North Africa. There was no love loss between those two. And the fact that they all uniquely went to the same direction suggests there's something else going on here. So let's go now to theory number four. They built towards the winter sunrise or sunset or towards some other astronomical horizon phenomena, and he called this sacred geography. This is sacred geography, that they were using these solstice lines, these equinox lines, solstice uh, during the shortest day and the longest day, and equinox, the equal days. And they did this uh, be in March, September for the equal days, June and December for long and short days. Now, that's a great theory. I love that theory. And possibly you can find one mosque that may fit that theory. But what also is wrong with that? What would you guess? Let me just look. Let's put the slide up because here's his quote. The Muslims developed a sacred geography in which over the centuries various schemes were developed in which segments of the perimeter of the Kaaba corresponded to sectors of the world which had the same Qibla, defined in terms of astronomical risings and settings. The first such schemes appear in Baghdad in the ninth century. Now, right away, that last line, they begin to appear when? Well, it's in the ninth right century. Here, in the ninth century. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's right there. He almost contradicts himself just within his own quote. I had to sit there and laugh when I read it. Uh, Dan didn't pick this up, by the way. Gibson didn't pick up this problem. But I, I said, I said, goodness sakes, this man contradicts himself. He's saying this is happening, supposedly happened in the 7th and 8th century. This is what they were doing. But then he says, well, no, this only began in the 9th century. Yeah, the first such scheme. 
<laughs> so I, 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 and I, appeared where? In Baghdad, which right after Abdul Malik's time, basically. You know, that's basically around the time of the Abbasid. 749 is when they come to power. Yeah. And so yeah. they are the Abbasids, you're right. Yeah. And the Abbasids, own, how do you pronounce it? Al Abbasin. Okay, I mean to pronounce like you do. So it's Abbasid. It's not Abbasid. It's Abbasid. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you for get no correcting problem. me. The Arabs corrects the Englishman. <laughs> so here we have the Abbasids who are coming into power in the mid eighth century, seven forty nine. They are the ones who start to introduce this after seven forty nine. So, but he's saying that this, they didn't even introduce this for another fifty years. This idea of putting it uh, using these sele- uh, these sacred geography is a ninth century invention. Way way too late. Now, I see we're going to run out of time, so we need to go ahead and maybe bring this to a conclusion at this time. Because what I want to do is I want to also go into the next three theories. Absolutely. And I, I think I hope that everybody is uh, is uh, understanding why we're taking our time with this particular video series and why we're calling it the Qibla Contradiction and why we are really investing a lot of time and energy to unpack these arguments uh, one show at a time because... We would love for you and any scholar who is watching this to benefit from this information that we are taking. We're relying on, uh, in my view, even Dan Gibson's work is academic. I mean, uh, regardless of how Dr. King views that, uh, we have books, research, practical visitations, data that Dan Gibson have used and implemented and even provided for all of us, for the rest of us really to look at. And we appreciate Dr. King's contribution to the field, but that doesn't mean whatever finding Dr. King have is eternal. There is always in research, in the world of academia, somebody new will come in and either critique your work or make more discoveries. So we hope that you're enjoying this series and join us again next time when we continue with these, the rest of these theories that Dr. King have provided as an answer or possible answer Uh, why some of the directions of Qiblas in early Islam contradicted each other or were confused and they were not facing Mecca. Thank you, Dr. J, and we'll see you again next week. Have a blessed day. Thank you for watching. Please like our video, and we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sira International, and be sure also to click the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we upload new videos into the channel. And finally, I like to prayerfully encourage you to become a patron through Patreon. Your giving is much needed and will enable us to produce more and more of videos like this so that we can publish them on a weekly basis. So thank you in advance.